Today, we crack open a time capsule and go over what has become one of my favorite interviews relating to Fire Emblem. A 90s era FE interview will of course be headlined by Shozo Kaga, Fire Emblem's creator, but beside him for this sit down was none other than Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy. The former series was on the rise after a rocky start. The latter series was dominating the market with millions in sales. The interview with the two developers is brief, but the meat of it is, boiled down, two passionate game developers praising and talking about the other. But in my opinion, to really appreciate what this interview meant at the time, context for Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy, and the year 1994 is required. The goal of this video is simply to go over what was going on with both of these guys at the time of this interview, and hopefully to successfully illustrate why I personally found it so cool. A lot was happening in 1994 for gaming. Nintendo unveiled the then called Ultra 64, Sony was entering the market at the end of the year with the PS1, Sega was continuing to compete with Nintendo having released new Sonic games, Nintendo themselves were popping off with Super Metroid and Donkey Kong Country. Among these IPs were two more that were having their time in the spotlight. First, there's Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem, the entry which not only held the record for having the franchise's best opening week in Japan before Awakening and Fates released many years later, but is still, including Three Houses, the best-selling Fire Emblem game domestically with a whopping 700,776, no pun intended, that's actually the number, 338 copies sold by 2002. Okay, I might be slightly puffing up FE3's numbers right now. This is not all to say that over the last two years, any one of these games could have surpassed FE3's record number. I'd wager Three Houses will surpass it domestically eventually, but it's just to put FE3's success in perspective. These aren't the most updated numbers we could find. In fact, 2021 is the latest of its numbers. But regardless, FE3's sales are astounding, and deciphering how FE3 reached the success it had is worth its own deep dive in my opinion. Fire Emblem 3 was relatively extremely successful. And the second game, Final Fantasy VI, which went on to become the best-selling Final Fantasy game domestically in Japan with 2.55 million units sold before Final Fantasy VII became truly a worldwide phenomenon just a few years later. With 90s Fire Emblem hitting its stride and Final Fantasy being a titan in the gaming industry already, this short, brief interview is even more interesting to extrapolate on. For the rest of this essay though, we're going to actually reorganize the quotes so they form more of a timeline for Fire Emblem's growth as a series from 1990 to this interview conducted in 1994. Sakaguchi. When Fire Emblem came out for the Famicom, it made a big impression on us at Square. Everyone wanted to know what kind of game it was. Back then, there was nothing like it, and I would say it's closer to an RPG than a simulation game. So at Square, when it came out, we bought it right away, and everyone gathered together to play and study it. I can't say it was the easiest game to pick up and play, but I felt something very special and addicting in it. And of course, I've been playing it ever since. Kaga. Yeah, that was something many people remarked on, that it was hard to learn and wasn't easy to get into. On the flip side though, once you figure it out, it was impossible to put down. Sakaguchi. Exactly. When someone walks by and sees me playing Fire Emblem and says something like, man, I can never play a game that hard, I throw the controller against the wall, I get annoyed. What can I say? I'm a convert. The distinction between Sakaguchi's impression and that of the general consumer is really interesting to me. In 1990, Kaga's game was being played and studied by a lead developer at Square, who appreciates the nuance this new genre of strategy game brought. Never before was a simulation game built like this, open-ended maps, a slew of characters to grow attached to, all tied together by a cohesive narrative. And yet, despite Fire Emblem breaking ground, everyone kinda sucked? At the time, FE1 was criticized for several reasons, among them, like Kaga mentions in that quote, that it was hard to learn and get into. Meanwhile, the game initially struggled to appeal to strategy game buffs because, due to being a Nintendo product, it was generally accepted, it was meant to be accessible, and was supposed to be appealing to Nintendo fans, kids, thus easy to pick up. It struggled initially because it was both too hard and too easy at the same time, on top of being pretty hard to understand. But clearly, from a game developer perspective, like with Sakaguchi's, something amazing was being crafted here. Once he got through the initial pains of FE1, he was hooked and became a fan. Later in the interview, after Kaga talked about what he liked about Final Fantasy, he mentions FE1's reception, and how things weren't looking great until someone in particular got their hands on the game. 
Kaga. Two years ago, when I was making Fire Emblem Gaiden, I had an interview with Nakaji for Famitsu in his Fire Emblem Priest column. We talked a bit then about Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. I remember telling him that, between the two, I really preferred Final Fantasy, which felt fresh and new compared to Dragon Quest. When Fire Emblem first came out on the Famicom, the early reviews were really harsh. Every game magazine gave it pretty bad scores. There weren't really many games back then that combined the RPG and strategy slash simulation genres, you see. It stung to see it get so much criticism for being hard to understand, or for not looking that impressive graphically. For those reasons, the reviews said it felt like some old game of yesteryear. A half year later though, Nakaji praised Fire Emblem in that column for his Famitsu. That was really when things started turning around, and the sales gradually picked up. For context, Giorgio Nakaji is a well-known and influential Famitsu editor who was popular enough to have a lot of sway for his readers back in the day. And yeah, Fire Emblem's road to success definitely had some potholes. But were it not for Nakaji bolstering more interest in his Fire Emblem column in 1990, who knows if that would have had any implication for the production of Gaiden or just the series' life in general. Regardless of its rocky start, things picked up, and by the time Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem released, something shifted. FE3 was a massive game and is still to this day a unique entry in the series. It's actually two games in one, a shorter, more polished version of FE1 called Book 1, and also a complete sequel to FE1 set three years later with a new story, new characters, and new maps to play in Book 2. And it was extremely good. FE3 was honestly massive in scale for 1994 standards. It gave Kaga another shot at FE1 while also delivering a brand new experience that you could just pick up and start if you didn't want to replay the first game. This is an aside, but like I said in my review for FE3 a few years ago, it was my favorite Kaga era Fire Emblem to play. And here, in this interview, Sakaguchi, the Final Fantasy guy, is praising the game in THE Japanese Gaming Magazine. Here is how the interview started. Sakaguchi, pleased to meet you. I'm Hironobu Sakaguchi. I've been really looking forward to this meeting today. Kaga, likewise, I've heard so much about you. Sakaguchi, I understand you've just concluded the development of Final Fantasy VI. Have you played Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem yet? Sakaguchi, not enough! I've been knee-deep in the FF6 development until just now, and the new Fire Emblem was released during the height of our work. I bought it on the day it came out, but I knew that if I opened it up, I wouldn't do any work, so it was sitting on my desk there like a decoration. During the most intense parts of the FF6 development, I comforted myself by saying, as soon as this is done, I can play Fire Emblem as much as I want. Now of course, I'm sure Sakaguchi had other things on his mind besides just playing Fire Emblem 3 finally, like I don't know, recovering from Final Fantasy VI's massive time crunch of having to be developed within one year, but you get the sentiment. Sakaguchi and Square were fans of Fire Emblem, and he himself was thrilled to play FE3, and that he did. He mentions later in the interview how he was getting engrossed in the game, and restarted a couple times due to improper unit planning and killing Navarre on accident, but he was addicted, blazing through to Chapter 10 and pulling all-nighters gaming on the Super Famicom, and hilariously played Fire Emblem like so many others do. If a unit dies, you reset the chapter, no exceptions. This was hilariously in contrast to how Kaga views unit deaths in his own series, where he encourages you to push through unit deaths and create your own experience with those losses. FE3 Book 2 was a very enjoyable experience that held up in 2019 back when I did my review, and it's clear by its massive popularity and positive reception that it captivated gamers in Japan in the 90s. So yeah, this was probably just the beginning, but can you imagine what this interview alone could do to pitch Fire Emblem 3 to gamers or readers of this magazine? Final Fantasy VI sold 2.55 million copies. It was the most popular Final Fantasy game domestically at the time. This this is like a celebrity endorsement to play your game. Probably. I don't know, I was two years old when all this happened. The interview was not so one-sided, of course. This gave Kaga a platform to praise Sakaguchi's work as well, and like his developer counterpart, he studied Final Fantasy. And what do you think about the Final Fantasy series, Kaga? Kaga. The one I really got sucked into was Final Fantasy III. The height of my obsession with FF3 coincided with the development of the first Fire Emblem on the Famicom, so I feel like I may have taken a lot of influence from it. What are your thoughts on the Final Fantasy series as a whole? Kaga. I'm extremely jealous of the gameplay system, the graphics, and the music. Square is at the top level of this industry. Their games are easy to understand, and anyone can pick up and play them. In the beginning, the Final Fantasy series had a bit of a hardcore reputation in some ways, but those elements have been progressively refined. On that point, I think I have a lot to learn myself from studying them. Sakaguchi. I'm very happy to hear you say that. 
Kaga himself also noted the difficulty of Final Fantasy III, noting how hard the final dungeon was, a near two hour monster without a save point. But the interesting thing is the enjoyment he got from beating the game and conquering the difficulty made for an extremely satisfying experience. Kaga. Yeah, but after restarting who knows how many times, and finally beating it and seeing the ending, it was extremely satisfying. That's why I don't think easy games are so great. Isn't the important thing how you feel after it's all over? The interview ends with the two developers briefly talking about FE and FF and what's in store for players. What really intrigues me about this piece of history is that at this moment in 1994, Final Fantasy was a titan of a series and Fire Emblem was reaching, or had reached, cult classic status. And these two developers met in person for the first time, both at extremely high points in their careers. I really, really enjoyed Mystery of the Emblem. But Final Fantasy VI is actually one of my personal favorite games of all time, like so many others. I remember emulating it when I was a kid, before even playing Fire Emblem in 2003 for the first time. I didn't really know what was going on, but I loved the character art and the graphics, and it took a really long time to beat it since it was just a tough game in general for me, and then just had basically a part two of the game built into it. So writing out this video has a lot of sentimental value. These are two excellent games that I never played when they came out. One I started when I was a wee little lad, and the other as an adult. And yet, despite the difference in years, there was a time where these two games crossed paths all the way back in April of 1994. Thanks for watching. Deuces. And that will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think of this interview? Have you ever played Final Fantasy VI? And what do you think of FE3's success in Japan? If you're still watching, thank you so much, and don't forget to leave a like on this video. The channel is also 3,000 subscribers away from 110,000, so if you've happened to stumble upon this channel, please consider subscribing. And finally, if you want to help support the channel even more, and you can afford it, please consider becoming a channel member. You get access to channel emotes and behind-the-scenes videos, a new one which will be uploaded very soon. That's all, see you soon, and thanks for watching. Deuces.